Are you feeling frustrated with eBay at the moment? Maybe you're not getting as many sales as you used to get, you've got low page views, small impression counts, and you're just thinking eBay is harder than it's ever been before. And to be honest with you, you're not alone. More and more people are choosing to quit eBay than ever before. And to be honest with you, the reasons as to why are pretty justified. But what if I was to tell you that there was a simplified, easy way to go about the process of selling on eBay in 2024 and still have a lot of success on the platform? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today, five reasons why people are choosing to quit and five ways that we can go about it in a way that can make us sustainable and have us selling on eBay in a really successful way. Big video guys, let's do it. Now the first one is absolutely one of the biggest reasons and that is that there is a massive learning curve, a super steep learning curve when it comes to selling on eBay. There are so many things that you need to get your head around when you first start out and the biggest drop off rate in any endeavor is always at the very beginning, right? If you've been around for a little bit on eBay, you've probably got through that steep learning curve process and things do get easier. Uh, but certainly in the very beginning, I know when I first started four years ago, there was all the thoughts in my head. What do I buy? How do I go ahead and list this up? What photos should I be taking? How do I ship it off? What spreadsheet should I be putting all of this financial information into? And then what profit am I actually making? And then on top of that, oh my God, taxes. What, what do I have to do with that? So by the time you've got your commitments of full-time work, some social activity commitments, maybe you've got some kids as well, to try and find these hours just to simply learn what to do and then to fumble your way through it when you first start out, no wonder people are choosing to run away from it in the early days. But I can, I can promise you, I'm four years in now and the, the steep learning curve has flatlined a little bit and it is much easier to get your head around things and just go about the monotical process of just doing what you have to do each day to keep the wheels spinning. Um, but if I had a way to be able to fast track that learning, I would have absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it four years ago. I found it such a slow learning process. And one thing that I offer through this YouTube channel, apart from these free videos, is mentoring. I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions because I really wanna try and fast track that beginner to just get the ball rolling a lot quicker than it took for me. Um, so if you are interested, the link is in the description for that. But you've gotta be a student of the game. You've gotta spend a lot of time just chipping away at learning the craft as well as doing the craft. That is only the only way you're gonna get good at anything. If you wanted to learn guitar, you're gonna to have to go to guitar lessons to become a good guitarist. So um, I would say, put the hours in. I think it's worth it. And I think it's 100% a reason why people are quitting, but there is ways around it. It's just a matter of how bad you want it. Now, the next reason is something that we all go through, not only in the early stages, but even in the experienced days as well. And that's just, we just buy junk. If we're honest with ourselves, we're not buying great items. And I've done this for four years and I still kind of do it today. I really need to try and catch myself out in these situations because they really do just leak money out of your bank account and they just end up, the money ends up sitting in bad stock that just sits on the shelves for months on end. And you worry about why you're not making any money. And that is the reason. You're just sinking it into really terrible products. So a um, very easy fix around this is you just want to be making sure that you're using fast sell through rate items only. So so the items that you choose to list up, the success of eBay only comes down to the success of the product that you've got. And sell through rate is the greatest way to determine whether or not your item is good or junk. And what I mean by sell through rate, if you are just starting out, is it's just how many times it sells in the last 90 days compared to its active listings. Um, so if you've got like 200 listings, then you've got 300 sales, that's well over 100% worth of a sell through rate. So it's a great item. Um, but if it was like 100 sales and there was 200, well, it's only a 50% sell through rate and you're probably gonna sit on that item for a little bit. So if you're out there on, and using the eBay app when you're sourcing your goods and you're focusing on sell through rate items, that would be a great way to determine whether or not your item is great or junk. And you really wanna limit the low valued items, the items that aren't worth a lot of money and the items that aren't selling through fast and really just focus, especially as a beginner, when you're just doing this as a part-time side hustle, I wouldn't be buying anything under 80%. I think 80% sell through rate is like the perfect number to begin with. Hopefully it can be over 100%, but focus on sell through rate. 100% is a great way to stay successful on eBay because it shows that these sales will come through because they are great items. It's proven with sales history on the platform. You've just got to be able to find it, which is another tricky thing as well. Finding the right stock is an absolute battle out there. Um, but if you can at all times, just be thinking sell through rate, you're going to be halfway on the way to success. 
This one could be the main reason why a lot of you guys have either quit or you're thinking about quitting eBay, and that is that the thrift stores and the postal service like Australia Post are constantly increasing their price points. Look, I've seen a lot of frustration myself uh, with these two aspects over the last 12 months. It feels like the Australia Post are just putting up their price points quarterly. Uh, and it is having a really, really large toll on eBay sellers out there. Let me know in the comments if you think the Australia Post Post Rises is enough for you to go, you know what, that'll do me, I'm out of here. eBay just is not worth it anymore. Look, you can go down that path and you can think that. I th like I said at the start of the video, I think that's a justified reason to throw it all in and give it all away. Um, the margins are just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. But if you do want to stick it out and you want to make some good money, I think trying to average out a higher average sale price on the products that you're buying is a really good way to combat these expenses. Because what happens is if your average sale price is up here, it's only going to shorten your margins, right? All of these, all these extra costs that are associated now that weren't around 12 to 18 months ago means that you've got to adapt. You can't be in the middle here with your average sale price. It needs to be higher to combat the, the expense rise. Um, so I'm trying to do that in my store. I've culled out all the cheap stuff so that when that does sell, I'm not at, I guess, at a loss in the sense of the recent rises have caused me to lose my margin. They're no longer in my store. I've got rid of them. Uh, and I'm also now focusing on only buying one, sell-through rate, and two, high average sale price. I think there's no other option. And if you're just starting out or if you're just a part-timer, you know, working a full-time job, looking to make a few dollars, Get a really nice, juicy, high average sale price, 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars. Even if you're not finding as many items as you think you might need, a lot of people focus on quantity of listings going into eBay, but I don't think that's the case. Somebody messaged me the other day on, on Instagram. They said to me, I've been full time for you know, X amount of years, can't remember exactly, but years. And they said they've never had more than 500 items in their store. So really small store, but turning over great items with a high average sale price and a really quick sell through rate. Um, and they've been successful and sustainable on the platform for a really long time. So there's so many ways of going about it, but to combat this rise that we're seeing and this nastiness that's going on from an expense perspective, a higher average sale price will keep you alive. Now I've written down an increase in competition for this next one. And it's definitely true, right? You go into a thrift store and you can tell. You can tell when a thrift store has been cleaned out by other resellers. It's just got that vibe to it. You can tell that there aren't any great items lying around and all the good stuff is gone. Or there was a back deal done that you weren't aware of and that didn't even make the shelf. Your competition is out there more than ever before. And it's a great way to deter you from wanting to continue selling on eBay. I've gone to the flea market for the last four Sundays in a row and the amount of people that I see out there that bump into me and say, Matt, love the videos, I've just started reselling and now ultimately out there as my competition taking away all the items that potentially I want to get. I'm never going to complain about it because I preach here on YouTube to say, hey, you should get into reselling. So I'm not really too against this one. I love the fact that people are trying to work really hard to make an extra dollar for themselves. I think it's a good thing. I think more people should be doing it, but we need to work out a way to be able to counter this because it's always going to continue. And I think the best way to counter it is to promote your listings on eBay. This is a big percentage for me. A lot of my sales, in fact, I believe it's as high as 60 to 65% of my sales are due to the fact that I'm promoting my listings at 3%. Basically, I'm beating my competition. I'm going to the top of the search rankings for a select period of time and my item is being found by a customer and ultimately I'm getting the sale. So if I didn't have 3% worth of promoted listings, I would not be a full-time reseller. I would not be doing what I do today. It is that significant worth of an impact to my business. So I really do recommend that you guys do that. If you're not promoting your listings, I highly encourage it. Try to go with the 3% to begin with, see how the sales go, and you can look to even boost it slightly more than that for select categories that might be a little bit slower. But that's been a big one for me. Make sure you're promoting your listings. They have a big, big impact. Now, one thing's for certain when it comes to selling on eBay, and that is you're gonna have to work really hard. To get rewarded on eBay, to make any form of money, any type of profit, you're gonna have to work super, super hard and very, very consistent. And I think a lot of people, can't put themselves in a position to do that. It can't be, it, it, it is, ultimately it's not the passive income that you think it could be. 
Um, you're gonna have to work tirelessly hard to, to make the dollars that you do. And anyone that's got big figures on eBay, I've got a lot of respect, uh, respect for those people because I know just how hard and how consistent you have to be with it. Um, but a great way to combat this is to try and just find efficiencies wherever you possibly can. Maybe lock yourself into a time of day, maybe a day of the week, whatever the case may be for your schedule, to say, right, this is the time where I give eBay a red hot go. I'm gonna list up my items, I'm gonna ship off my products, and I'm just gonna make sure that I clock in for these hours every day. It becomes much more uh, efficient when you know when you're gonna be getting into it. Uh, and I would also just shift the way that you go about your listings. It's not so much about filling the store with as many listings as you possibly can, because that's where the junk listings come into it. You wanna be actually more focusing around, I believe, a dollar amount. I'm putting in $500 a day, and I'm seeing a lot of success with putting a monetary value in worth of listings each day, rather than a quantity. It just means that I buy better product, and I'm okay when I hit that $500 quota, if I've only listed two or three items, if the items are worth you know, 150 bucks a piece and I'm only listing up four or so items, I'm cool with that because the value has hit my $500 listing goal. And I haven't seen a drop in listing uh, quantity affect my sales at all. In fact, I've seen my profit go up because I'm listing higher valued items like we've spoken about earlier. So trying to get more efficient with your time, but ultimately realizing it is gonna need to be hard work that will get the job done with eBay. You're gonna have to put some hours in, but ultimately I truly believe it's 100% worth it. Now, if you're unsure, if you're a beginner, if you're first just starting out and you don't know how to sell on eBay efficiently and correctly, there is a beginner's guide that I have created right here. And like I said, mentoring available on the link in the description as well. Appreciate you being here for this video, guys. Keep at it. You can make some good money on this thing.